So we recently sold a big old heavy typewriter on eBay and I'm going to show you how to pack it. This is an old 1900s typewriter. Uh, it's an LC Smith before they were Smith Corona. So you know it's old. Um, it weighs a ton. It's really heavy. Basically I'm double boxing it um, just to pad it really well and protect it. Okay, so I've got a uh, bubble wrap with the big bubbles. Okay, so now you've got a big kind of bubbly cushion going on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a box that I got at the grocery store. It's actually a double cardboard box, so it's like super thick. And I opened it up. So what you can do is if, if there's a part that's not going to bend, you can score this with scissors, which I'll do in a second so it'll bend over. Ah, that might be okay. I'm going to score this bottom part so it bends better. Should help it bend at a better place. Now I've done most of the shell. And you can see the sides are still kind of open. Um, and what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to stuff these with like, like thick newspaper or craft paper. Cardboard's great because it just kind of bends. <laughs> okay. So the basic idea for packing big kind of delicate things or small delicate things is to double box. So that's basically what I'm doing is I'm making a shell to protect this. And when I put it in my bigger box, I'll put padding all around it. So it's kind of like a shell inside a shell just to keep it kind of uh, really cushioned. We would call that the floating method, floating a box inside a box. Now that I've got my shell, I have a box that it should fit inside. It was a big printer box. And I have um, a paper shredder, and I shred just scrap paper, and I use that as cushion for this type of thing. So I'm just going to dump that in. in there. I am going to pack all the edges with uh, shredded paper or newspaper, whatever I have the most of, just to really pack it in there. So we managed to use shredded paper, newspaper, and then this craft paper that I had to stuff the top. And I'm just going to shut this. So for these packages, I use these fragile stickers that I buy on either eBay or Amazon. And I print out these this end up labels. I could buy them, but I don't use them that often, so I just print them on the um, printer. And then I just stick them all over the box, just so the mail handlers hopefully would read them. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to weigh this to see how much my uh, label will be. If I can pick it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's see. Let me see. I'll guess. I'm going to guess 40 pounds. Oh. <laughs> 39.2 I was right it was about 40 pounds so that was just a guesstimate so I feel pretty cool about that that took about 20 minutes but I had planned it out earlier like 
I had already strategized like the boxes I was going to use. That takes a few minutes too. So. And then everything that you used was recycled. Like you didn't pay for it. Yeah. Right? So all the all the packing materials that I used were recycled from big box stores mostly. Um, the only thing that I buy is the big bubble wrap with the big bubbles. I buy that on eBay because um, it's just invaluable to use that. Hopefully they don't return it.